you you don't know anything about creating web pages. That's correct, right? Oh yeah, trust perfect. me. Perfect. So I need to teach you. I don't you... even know what what that is. It's like what? What, no, what am no. I doing right now? That is absolutely perfect. You're exactly who I want to be on this because I want to. I'm like how to teach to dumbs like that book, you know? <laughs> yes. Dumb. Building a website for dummies. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I'm your your test. Yep. So I'm gonna go to CodePen.com because I think it's CodePen. Or is it CodePen.io? Mm -hmm. No, yeah, this is right. This is right. So the reason I'm coming here is because, uh, let's see here. This is going to show you like how, like what, how to build just a web page, not a website. And then we can like build on that foundation and go to the next, uh -huh. to the next part. Right. Like so, just like a blog. Well, right now we're not even getting that complicated right now. We're just like, how do you even build a web page? You know? Yes. Yeah. So, um, one thing, okay. There's three different technologies that are used to create a web page. One of them is called HTML. You might've heard of it. Um, it uh -huh. stands for hypertext markup language. And it's really just like, I'm using it. Is it what? Everybody used it. Like most of them. Well, you have no choice. If you're going to build a web page, it has to have HTML in it. Uh huh. So, this is an example. Like, if you go to HTML5 validator and you say, hey, I want to uh -huh. validate an HTML5 document, it's going to give you all these tags, right? So, I'm going to yes. copy these over as just kind of a base thing to work with, right? And I'm going to paste it right here. And it's going to color it for you to see what's going on. And now we've got a white page. Let me explain what's going on. Yeah. So this first line, and most of the time, you I mean, you don't have to like really remember this, you just look it up real quick. But this doc type mm -hmm. declaration at the top is really just saying this is an HTML5 document. Because we've been through various versions of HTML over the years, but HTML5 mm -hmm. is the new hotness and we've been using it for many years. So, mm -hmm. so HTML, it consists of a bunch of tags. Like this is a tag. And then this is the closing tag for that same tag. And you can put stuff inside. Yeah, I just, I just, um, it's very small. I can't read it, but it's. No, it's very, fine. I'll blow small. it up. See? Oh, yeah, better. better. That's yeah, yeah. better. Maybe I'm, maybe I have too much minors. No, it's. Yes, yes. Now I can't read. Totally valid. <laughs> because it was like, yeah, mirror of the computer was very, very. So this, this is a tag, right? This is a, a uh -huh. tag. And then this is the closing tag. That's how you write it. And then if you wanted to put something inside of it, that's what it would look like. Mm-hmm. Like irk. Like what? <laughs> like that, that website you used to use in late um, 2000s, like irk. You go to chat, conversation, irk, and you use codes to talk with people. It's literally like one of I, these. I R C. Huh? It's literally like one of these tags. You yes. Know? Yeah, so... Uh -huh. This, like this tag, that's that's a tag, right? By the same concept, mm -hmm. this is a tag. And it has an ending like tag. Like suffix? Yeah, well, I mean, it's the starting position and the ending position of it, yeah. So you can have nested mm -hmm. tags, like you can have, you can have like A tag, hi, then you can have like B tag, by. You have to end the B tag and then end the A tag. Mm -hmm. Like it's nested like that. You can't end A first and then end B or else that's going to not validate. That's, that's invalid. It doesn't like that. Mm -hmm. So you can't do that. But um, you, can, you can do this. So let me do this again. I just pasted this in here. Right. So I see what they're doing here. Let me just start over. Okay. So with an HTML document, the first tag that you need is always an HTML tag. Just like this. It's lines. It's just line you one, line two. I mean, what what's your point? I don't know, because it's right. One, two, three, four. Yeah, those are line numbers, but my point is just focus on the content, right? So if you're gonna build an HTML document, the first tag is uh -huh. always gonna be an HTML tag. Period. Uh -huh. There's uh -huh. no way around that. Yeah. The uh -huh. second tag is typically a head tag. Head. And that's where you put stuff like like a title to the page. 
like uh, like welcome to my web website like... <laughs> like that yeah and then that title is actually going to show up here at the very top of your browser tab like your browser tab content is going to be that title okay do you understand like right here yes. where it says a pen by captain anonymous that is the title if i was to inspect a page like if i go to google.com mm -hmm. it says google at the top there if i was to right click on the white space in the background and say view page source or control u it's all this garbage mm -hmm. right but if you go to the very top you're going to see doc type html and then if i search for it this title tag Sure enough, there it is right there. See, title Google. It's, oh yeah, now, now I see, I was totally powerful. Yeah. Now I see, yeah. So the title okay. Google is what says to put Google up in the title bar there. And that's important for mm -hmm. search engines too, so that they actually know when you search for something, they know what to put at the top of that search result. So that's what a title mm -hmm. is, right? Yeah. So after the head section, it, it comes the body. I know this is really hard to remember, right? Because you got a head and a body, right? It should be super yes. easy. Inside the body, you can type whatever you want. Qu content, like... Right. Explaining what you do. Yep. Like a text, a big one. Yep. And so you can see down here this white page. It now says hello world because I put hello world in the body. Mm -hmm. right so yeah, an html I've... document is literally just a bunch of tags that define content that's all it is mm -hmm. does that make sense now i can i can say instead of just hello world i can i can create like a heading like uh h1 and i can say um cookbook or something like that mm -hmm. and now that is like a big heading like that and then if I want a couple paragraphs of text underneath it, I could say, this is a paragraph. And that's a P tag for mm -hmm. paragraph. H1 is for header, like header one, header one. You could do H2 mm -hmm. through H6 if you wanted to. Just be like, okay, header one is like the most important header of your page. And then P is just a paragraph of text. But from a content standpoint, like you could build a whole website with this and never touch CSS or JavaScript because you're just putting content on the page, right? Yes. In fact, yes. If, if you look at craigslist.com, you, you may have been there before. This webpage is really mostly just content. It's not a lot of it's, style or anything. It's just, it's just naked, right? I, I'm, yeah, it's naked, right. Yeah, so that's that's it's HTML. a blank page, except it's great. Right. Yeah. So what happens if you want to like um, change the background color of your web page to hot pink, right? So that's what CSS yeah. is for. CSS is cascading style sheets. That's what it stands for. And the way that mm -hmm. it works is you can actually target different things. Like you can target the H1, and you can say, well, I want that to be red, and it's going to be like. Okay, uh, there it is. It's red. No big deal. Yeah. What if I want a different tone of red? Yeah, there's all sorts like of different Pantone. colors. Oh, Pantone. Pantone doesn't exist in in on the web because the yeah, web... but the like a I know, hashtag I know. one and two and three like I used to I'll, use. I'll I'll explain that to you. On but my look, photo Pan log. Pantone is a printing term and it doesn't exist on the web because the web is all about light, right? Your web page is yeah, just it's a monitor. Red it's, tag stuff. It's red, right? green, and blue. So if you have um, FFF, that's white, because it's yes. it's a hundred percent red. I remember that. Yeah, hundred percent red, hundred percent green, hundred percent blue produces white. But if you do F zero zero, that's red. And then if you do like zero F zero, that's green. And if you do zero zero F, that's blue. Yeah, I have. I use that sometimes to create colors. Right. So the reason that works that way, if I pull up a calculator, 
is that uh, if you if you have your standard calculator here and you switch it to a programmer calculator, you can look at this uh -huh. text value up here. And so you uh -huh. can say, well, um, so we, we count in tens, right? Because we have 10 fingers on our hands. Yes. We count 10, <laughs> but that's why decimal is 10, right? So if I wanted to count to yeah. 10, you just punch in 10 here. Hexadecimal uh -huh. counts in 16s instead of 10s because that's how computers Like count. time. Oh. Well, I mean, it, it oh, starts 16. It starts yeah. from binary, right? At the very bottom of it, you have zeros and ones, little light switches. That's oh, your yeah. computer's driven okay. by binary code, right? And then mm -hmm. those, those zeros and ones, if you have a couple of those, you can count up to four. So now you're counting to four, and then you count to eight, and you count to 16. You've heard mm -hmm. these numbers before. It goes to 32, 64, 128, 256. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. right? They're all multiples yeah. of two. They're all exponents, really, of two. So um, uh -huh. with colors, it's the same thing, but you can only count up, each color, you can only count up to 256. Mm -hmm. So that's actually from zero to 255. That is how high you can count. 255 would be solid, brightest version of that color. Bright red would be mm -hmm. 255, zero, zero. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I wanted bright red, I would type uh, I would type two five five, and you can see the hex translates to ff, mm -hmm. which is really just you know I, I I believe that's just sixteen times sixteen because you have two f's. It's mm -hmm. I'm not explaining that otherwise, but basically you count up to nine zero one two three four five six seven eight nine. And then you go A, B, C, D, E, F. That's how you count to 16 in hex. Okay. So F is the highest value that you can get. Right? Mm -hmm. So yes. if, we go, if we go back to decimal and we just do like 16 times 16, you get 256. Mm -hmm. Because those two Fs, 256 five, again, the, um, I'm sorry, 255. Five. Those two Fs are literally two 16s right next to each other, which is 255. So there's a shorthand, oh. there's a shorthand way of doing this, which is just to not say FF0000, because that is also red. The shorthand way of doing it is just to say F00. Mm -hmm. And you're doing the same thing. But if you had a more complicated color, like you had F50 D uh you know three one right this is a different color that mm -hmm. is uh why is it not changing the color oh probably because it's still red but like if i if i made this three one no but uh, it's darker if i made this a d one it would be a different color it would be like this violet color right oh yeah yeah because i gave it more blue Mhm. Mm anyway that's how you change color but you can also use special key color names like red you can use like hot pink you can use uh orange red which is a pretty cool color right whatever you want yeah and you can just say black i mean you for basic colors that's all you need and you can look up colors online and find all sorts of stuff but that's i like you. greenish black greenish which black is gray but but still, <laughs> it's a kind of gray, whatever. Right, so you can look HTML colors, you'll find a whole bunch of stuff here, right? Like you can, yeah. You can define colors in a couple different ways. This is the hex code. This is hue, saturation, lightness. You can do uh, red, green, blue, alpha, uh, hue, saturation, lightness, alpha. You can do uh -huh. just red, green, blue, you know, like that if you wanted to do. Um, back in the day, you really only could do hex. But nowadays, you can do a whole bunch of different ways. Yeah, that's so, yeah. good. Tomato, that's a good but color. Right? Hex is simple, I think. It's not bad. I mean, it's definitely not as many, it's not as much typing. But if you wanted to like use a program, like Krill Photo Paint I use a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And you wanted to, convert, you didn't know how to translate a particular color into hex. Well, the program always, these days, they're, they're going to tell you how to do that. Yeah. So I'm going to create a new document, and I'm just going to, like, I don't know, paint something, 
in this color, let's get a bigger paintbrush. Right, you can paint something in another color, whatever. Uh, I don't even have any anti-aliasing that looks kind of dumb, but yeah. So like that, right? And then you could get your eyedropper mm -hmm. and you could say, I want this color that's like between the purple and blue. So what's this color right here? And I'm hovering over it. Yeah, I like to uh, steal colors using eyedrop. It's really, really small, but it says, it says pound 7258A1. So 7258A1, we could go back. You said you like a dark green, right? So like... Yeah. Like a... Like very dark, almost... Like that green black. or darker? Like almost black. How about this one? Military. Blacker? Yeah, blacker. All right, well... Yeah, that's I don't know. like literally black. <laughs> Anyway, so we can get the color between, and we can get like yeah. this color. It says zero zero three eight three four. I'm picky. Three eight three four. So let's try that. Zero zero three eight three four. We can say zero yeah. zero three eight three four. And now the color of cookbook is this dark green, right? So you can do that. Yeah, it's good. I like it. Anyway, I don't want to spend too much yeah. time on colors, but Chic. but yeah, that's how you do it. So let's let's go ahead and just target like the the body. And I'm going to say, like, background color is hot pink. And... No. <laughs> and the color is white. <laughs> I mean, I'm just demonstrating. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Does it matter if I start doing this and end up at the line 5? Because you're writing this at the line 1. What if it's write it on the line 5? For example, there we go. There's a dark green. Okay, uh, what about line five? Yeah. What were you asking about line five? No, I w I was asking if uh, what if we write it not in the first line and if the line four, for example. You mean or... like here, like that. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. White yeah, space doesn't matter. Yeah, code doesn't care. You could do yeah. this. You could make it look super like ugly if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, you could do it. You could put it all on the same line if you wanted. Like, it doesn't matter. It's all white space. Uh, yeah. But it doesn't look pretty, obviously. So you want to be like that. No, I like space. <laughs> Sounds more organized. Yeah, well, you can do whatever you want. But if you're working on a team and uh, you do all sorts of crazy stuff, people will hate you. So <laughs> keep that in oh, mind. Oh, people will hate me then. Anyway, so we talked about HTML. Because, you, because you're, uh, you're wasting space? No, I mean because it's not human readable. Like it, sometimes, oh. sometimes people will do stuff like this to make it a little bit more human readable. Um, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter and we use tools for stuff. Anyway, I'm just saying if it's you're working like on a team, you have to do uh -huh. what the team agrees on. You can't do Patterns. what you agree on. Yes. Yeah. So we talked about Got HTML. It. HTML is mm -hmm. just content. CSS is just how that content is colored and like how it looks and, and, and basically the prettiness, like making it, giving it a makeover. So what is JavaScript? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm afraid of that. Every time my computer have problems, it's Reddit, Java have a problem. Java and JavaScript are different, but yeah, if you're going onto a web page and there's some Sounds sort of error. Sounds like a problem to me. <laughs> it's definitely JavaScript that's causing the error, yeah. So what happens if we have a button on our page, like right here, I'm gonna say button. Uh -huh. And I want the button to say, click me. Yeah, when you say button, it's you click and gives you like put you somewhere else, like a link, take you to. No, not place, No, that would right? be that would be an anchor because I could say anchor. I could say uh, href equals Google dot com. Go to Google mm -hmm. like this, and then mm -hmm. I've created a link that says go to Google. Which if you click, which I'm not going to click it, but I'll open it in a new tab. Mm -hmm. It'll go to Google. Yeah, all button. It's like it's a new tab. Um, 
short. Well, a button like by that. itself is just content. I can click it all day long. And it's not going to do anything. Okay. okay. But then it's content. Okay. It's just content. It's just content. Right. But, you know, I want to give this button, um, uh, l let's make it like an add to cart button, right? Like add to cart like that. Uh -huh. Right? Clicking, nothing happens. But if I say, uh, I want to give you a class name of uh, add to cart like this. Mm -hmm. Then in CSS, I can actually target it like this with dot add to cart. And I can say this one I want to have like background color, hot pink, color white. And now I've targeted that color, that, that button, and I've told it what to look like. But I don't like that ugly border, oh. so I'm going to say border zero and turn off the border. And now it's nice a nice little, oh, but I'm like, I want it to be bigger. So I give it like padding 20px. And now it's a much bigger button, but the font isn't big enough. So I say font size, uh, you know, uh, 24 PX. How about that? So now it's a huge button, right? Mm -hmm. So you can do stuff like that to make your button look bigger and more, make it look nicer, right? Yeah. Night you save change. What's that? It's right at, and. Uh... 93 unsaved changes. Oh, okay, 93 unsaved yeah. changes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what that's all about, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you changed it all. So you're saying CSS have more options or not? For I'm you saying like if I wanted to target just that button, yeah. you have to tell HTML, you have to identify that button with some sort of identifier. Mm -hmm. And then in CSS, you can actually target that item and you can, you can style only that, or you could have like a couple different buttons, right? Like this, I'm going to put another button and I'm going to say, uh, -huh. uh, class equals actually, let's make this a little bit more like a, but a, a style that we can reuse. Right. So I'm going to say, uh, mm -hmm. big pink button, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I have two buttons on the page, but it broke because I no longer have a reference to that big pink button. I have to change add to cart to say big pink button. Okay, but it didn't get this one because I didn't add that class here too. So I can say big pink button on this one. And now I've got two buttons that have the exact same class and therefore they are styled exactly the same. Mm -hmm. But it's, and it's every time saved, like if you save and if you go there another day, like different day and you write like the same thing is going to happen it's exactly the same stuff. I mean, yeah, if you added another button with the exact same class, uh -huh. you're going to get the same look, right? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Yes. Yeah, so... Um, it's not if, just today. It's just, like, forever. What do you mean forever? If I'm tomorrow, need to go there and have to, like, oh, what if I write it? Maybe I will save time because it's already saved. That is that happening? Um, I'm not sure what you're asking, but like, if you want to add more buttons and just keep using that, yeah, it's, it's going to be saved in, unless you delete yeah, it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to keep using that. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. So you've got a button and you've got it looking the way that you want it to look. I'm going to delete this one. The next thing that you want to do is you want to have it do something, right? You don't just want to have a button that you click and does nothing. So you can mm -hmm. actually add this on click handler like this. You can say on click equals, um, let's say add another pad to cart like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm clicking it and it still does nothing because there's no, there's no behavior defined for what add to cart should do. Right. That's what JavaScript for, is for. you got HTML content. So we need to create like a job. Right, for you the do. Name. Of course, you need to create something for that name. Exactly. Oh, how much work! I mean, it's not that bad. It's just like you have three different kind of 
files that determine how to control this behavior, right? So you've got uh-huh. HTML for content. Just think of it like that. Uh-huh. You've got CSS for how that content looks. And then uh-huh. you've got JavaScript for how that content behaves. I'm so, not, I'm not, I still don't understand Java. Well, it's it not Java. It's useless to me. It's, it's not Java, it's JavaScript. It's different. Okay. It's not useless. I'm going to explain it right now what it does, okay? So okay. I'm going to create a function and it's going to be mm-hmm. called add to cart. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to alert. I know that. I'm going to alert got here. Mm-hmm. And theoretically, when I hit this button, it's not going to do anything, actually. Why not? I don't know. I actually don't even write functions like this anymore. <laughs> it's been a long time. Huh. I honestly What's have not. What's happening? No, this, this is like a really... I have not done this in so many years because nowadays we're oh, development okay. is not like this. So let me just do it the new way. So um, in, in JavaScript, oh, I would say... No. What? <laughs> you erased everything. I erased it, but I'm cr- recording a video so you can look at it later if you want to. But anyway, okay. I'm going to rename this class instead of big pink button. It's just going to be add to cart. In fact, you okay. can add two classes to it. And mm-hmm. so it's an add to cart button, but it's also a big pink button. Why not? Mm. Right? Yeah. That's so you easier. could actually, you could add more classes like add to cart and say, well, well, in the case of an add to cart button, I actually want the background color to be some sort of blue. Let's say corn flower blue. I think that's a color. Corn flower. Uh, I don't remember. Actually, these these rules need to be reversed. These real rules need to be reversed because this add to cart button needs to trump this one. It needs to overwrite that one so this one's at the top right and then mm-hmm. once it applies this one it will be applied after the fact so go ahead and do your big pink button but you know if it's an add to cart button i'm just gonna make it a different color which is really deceiving that we've called it a big pink button now but you know don't don't get too caught up on that right now okay so now i can go into javascript and i'm gonna say okay i have a document an HTML document. So I'm going to say document dot get elements by class name. And I'm going to say uh, to add to cart. Oops. Add to cart. And I'm going to console dot log this. format it a little bit better so you can see what it looks like and then if we open up the console it's gonna say mm, no and you've got a problem and I'm like what are you talking oh. about it says uncaught syntax error missing a parenthesis after your argument list what is it talking about because it's I think I have to clear this actually. Oh yeah, it was an old me- message. Nope, it was not an old message. Let's see. Right. So, uh, let's see here. I've got this, oh right, because I put a semicolon there. That's what it was, add to cart. I just want the console to tell me what, what is going on. Browser console instead. Because it's upside. Isn't it? Okay, this should be fine. I want to rerun it though. I want to tell this page to rerun, so I'll just change something a little bit. Ugh, it's so annoying. 
Anyway, the point is we've got this HTML collection being returned. I basically said in JavaScript, I said, I want you to give me all the elements that have this class name called add to cart. And it says, okay, I gave it to you, but uh, we actually don't have any items. And I'm like, well, that's not cool because I know that I have an add to cart button here. I think it's because I didn't add a dot here, maybe. Nope, let me go here again. Apparently I am a noob, so yeah. Mm. Oh, you know what? I think it's because it has two class names maybe because we gave it two names. So it's I don't know. confused. Let's see. I'm going to delete the uh, big pink button and just leave it add to cart. And then I'm going to move all of this stuff down here. Delete the big pink button. Okay, clear that. And let's do... Is it working? Okay. Ugh, I think I have to actually use my console. So I'm going to hit control tilde, or control... Actually, control shift J on Windows. Yeah, there we go. So um, I opened up my console, which is built into everyone's browser. And I did mm -hmm. that by saying control shift J, which is the same as going to I click the three dots over here and you just go to like more tools, developer tools. It actually says control shift I. Hmm. Don't know. It can't be control shift. -I. Yeah, control shift I, that works too. Okay, fine. There you go. So I'm in this console here, and if I, mm -hmm. I'm gonna clear it out so that it's empty, and then I'm gonna change this to carts with a Z, and it says HTML collection, but it's empty. So I change it to carts without the Z, and it says HTML collection button dot add to cart. So it's like, okay, I found it. I found a button, and it has this add to cart. I'm gonna zoom this in for you too, so you can see it. Button dot add to cart. Yeah, right there, button add to cart. Mm -hmm. So it found it, but it's a list because you could have multiple buttons on your page that have the exact same um, class name. So, but you can only mm -hmm. have one item on the page that has a particular ID. So I'm gonna give it an ID of add to cart and change the class to big pink button, rename the class to big pink button in CSS. And then instead of getting the elements mm -hmm. by class name, I'm just gonna get element in the singular by ID. And now I've got one item. I know that I've got only one item on my page that has this ID called add to cart. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm actually getting that in JavaScript. Okay, but what do you do with it? Mm -hmm. Well, um, interesting. You put a link. Yeah, we, we already got, well, we don't want a link because if it's a link, then it just goes somewhere, right? We actually want this to hit some sort of database somewhere and like add a cart to it, right? So I'm mm -hmm. gonna say, uh, I'm saying const button equals document get element by ID add to cart. And then I'm gonna say console.log button. And here we go, we're back to there. We've got our button. So I've got a button, but I wanna make it do something, right? So I say button.onClick equals function alert hi. So let's see what happens if I click on this button. It alert works. hi. It works, it says hi. I got this little pr this alert box that popped up. You can say prompt what is your name? And then if I click the button, it says, hey, what is your name? And you're like, oh, my name is Louisa. You can do okay. You can, like do all sorts, you, can do, you can do stuff, right? So I'm just trying to explain. We got HTML document. We got CSS says mm -hmm. how that HTML looks. And then we have a JavaScript, mm -hmm. which says how it behaves. We've said, okay, we've got a button. 
when I click on it, I want to run this function and I'm just going to ask somebody for their name. Mm -hmm. Or ask them for a quantity or, you know, obviously this is super dumb. Nobody would ever want to have that kind of an add to cart button on their page. But yeah. I'm just illustrating how you wire things together. Yeah, I, I can, um, above it all, I can say I know how it works. I mean, which one do different things, it's doing different things. Yeah, you just, depending on what you're trying to do, if you're trying to make it look differently, you open up your CSS file, you make some changes. If you want to make it, yeah. you want to add some more content, you open up your HTML file, you make some changes. And if you want to make that button do something different, you open up your JavaScript file and you make some changes. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can totally understand. Like, if I have a website and I decided that I need a different behavior for my button, I go there and I change JavaScript. Right. Exactly. And so if you wanted to, uh, obviously, I'm not going to teach you everything right here. There's just uh -huh. so much information behind all these things yeah. that you can't possibly learn it overnight. But if oh, you go to sure. if you go to MDN.com, this is a really great resource for documentation. Should you MDN. ever need to like understand uh, is MDN.com or what's MDN? Get element. It's the Mozilla Demo Development Network. Okay, so it's developer.mozilla.org, which is MDN. It's mm. Mozilla Deve Developer Network, but whatever. What I do is oh. if I want to know something, I'll say in, in whatever your search engine is, I'll just say MDN, and then I'll say, okay, what do I want to know? Uh, button for an HTML button, right? So I'll do MDN uh -huh. button, and the first result is usually exactly what I want. It takes me straight to MDN. And it shows me mm -hmm. the button element, and it tells me what kind of things that you can do with the button. You can say disabled. You can disable your button so that you click it and it does nothing. Oh, right. You it's can... like a dictionary. Exactly. And so it tells you all the different <laughs> things that you can do with a button, right? Oh, that's great. And the same uh -huh. is true as JavaScript. If you say MDN get element by ID, the first result uh -huh. is almost always, if not always, going to be exactly what you want. And if you look in the left, you're going to see a whole bunch of other things that you can do that are similar to get element by ID. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's all sorts of events and things that you can, you can get, gain access to. Here we go. Get elements by name. Get elements by class name. Get elements by tag mm -hmm. name. You can do all mm -hmm. these different things and just click on that. Yeah. And it tells you how to use it. It gives you an example, you know. So yeah, it's better for class name because it's simple, I think. Yeah, especially if you're going to have more than one of them on your page. You might have a particular button. Mm -hmm. You might have five buttons on your page that look exactly yeah. the same and they do the exact same thing. And so you would use the class name mm -hmm. because you, you can share that class name between all those buttons. But if it's just one yeah. button and you know there's only ever going to be one add to cart button on your whole page, you can give it an ID and you can target it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's difficult like, to have just one button. It makes Maybe sense it, to have just it's... one add to cart button, but it doesn't make sense yeah, to have... Yeah, just one add to cart, yeah. Right, but like on Facebook, it does not make sense to have like one... Uh, let's see if I go to Facebook. How many things can we find here that are like the same button? on this page mm. okay look we've like, got a comment like like we, we've got a yeah we've got a like button exactly great example but we've got a whole bunch of like buttons on on the whole feed right so yeah, we want which all one's the, different right we want them all to do the exact same thing but we just want to send an id like oh this post id is one two three okay so we're gonna yeah. click the like button and then javascript is gonna say i'm going to oh it's tell... a, like a labyrinth of javascript because it's a lot of different behaviors. Yep, exactly. It's mostly JavaScript, in fact. It's just a lot oh, of JavaScript. Oh, imagine doing that, creating Facebook. <laughs> it's, it's not a one-person job. Not, not yeah, at all. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. There's just so much stuff there. So much content, like so puzzle. much behavior. It really yeah. is. And they have to worry about performance and all sorts of things, right? Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Now, like mm-hmm. back in my day when I first started writing web pages, which was like back in 1995, absolutely, mm-hmm. you could have one person build a whole website and they were called the webmaster and they did everything. And you mm-hmm. could totally do that back then. But nowadays, there are so it's many things that you impossible. need. It's, all, it's definitely impossible because you have to be concerned about search engine optimization. You have to be concerned about marketing. You need to have it do all this, that. You need to have a specialized JavaScript developer. You need to have somebody who's really good at, um, at marketing campaigns, somebody who's really good at product development, design. You can't just build a website that people are going to actually use unless you consider every single facet of that website. Thing. Right. So I just wanted to teach you those basics because if you don't know these fundamentals, nothing that I'm going to say in the future is going to make any sense to you. Yeah, I know now, but I'm still dummy. Right. So I've never, <laughs> I mean, you're coming from zero. That's great. But you're, you're willing to learn, which is really, really awesome. So uh, I just want to take this to the next step. So, uh, Obviously, you could spend a lifetime learning all these different tools and things on like how to create a website. Yeah, it's for crazy people. But I have never used this product called Gatsby before, and I was curious. I was curious what it would be like, right? So what we just talked about, you need so many people to build a good website, right? Uh But with Gatsby, it takes away a lot of the stuff that you might have to so facebook has like performance engineers they have engineers that are doing build tools and publishing things and all sorts of stuff right but Mm -hmm. if you do gatsby it's kind of doing all the dirty work for you so essentially they've created this stack that works really well from what i understand because i've never used it and you never used it i've never used gatsby but i've heard of it oh let's do an app I know that's what I was gonna do with you. <laughs> I've never used it. Oh, I'm very curious. I okay, so, which app I'm gonna do? Well, it, I'm not a. I mean, I'm not gonna like actually build anything, but like just for the sake of demonstration, we can do like a like a fake um, shopping cart or something. But, okay, that's easy. So let's get started with Gatsby because I want to figure out how to actually take these technologies and and get started how fast can we do this right how good it is yes right so the the catch point of gatsby is that it's a blazing fast modern site generator for react i I can't read that because it's too small (laughs) oh yeah it's better yeah oh so much better it's a blazing fast modern site generator for react what that means Mm -hmm. is that instead of a server like you know you ask facebook I want this page and then the server says, oh, let me go find it. And then it renders the page and then all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Gatsby is going to create a site for you that is going to be already built and it's just ready to go Mm -hmm. and it's statically served. So it's like cached and everything. And so the moment that you request that page, it's ready to go. Like there's no waiting really. It's super fast. So I pre-model it. Pre-what? He's like self already done. Well, they they do they have a team of people that are working on like all sorts of performance optimization techniques, and so you don't have to worry about it. All you have to worry about is what content you're going to put on the page, and let them do all that stuff. Oh, and they like selling it. Why they're doing that? It's so far, your microphone. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm wearing a headset. I thought that... Oh. I, thought I that, can't um, hear you. Yeah, I thought that my that you were going with my headset, but actually I just left the room. I left the microphone all by yourself. Yeah, I could hear you, but very far. It's crazy. Okay, yeah, so the way that they're making money, um, this is actually completely mm-hmm. open source, so it means it's free. 
but they are making money by giving like cloud services and allowing people to host mm -hmm. their sites and like all sorts of service and stuff like that. I don't know the extent of it, but we're going to see how far we can get for free. How about that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe it's just like for one month and then you have to pay. Okay, so here's a tutorial. If you be able to create your website. Here's a tutorial. We're going to do a step-by-step okay. -step instruction on how to install Gatsby, start the project, written for people without Gatsby or web development experience. Perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Though these le learning resources have helped developers of all skill levels. Or we could do a quick start, one-page summary of how to install Gatsby. That seems like fun Oh, I, ha more. I have a question. Yeah. Is this, this website for like people like me or people like you? Well, I think number two is for people like me because it's a quick start and like I'm like uh -huh. just getting up and running. But for you, it says there's no web development experience required. So I think this tutorial is, is totally okay for you. Um, oh, okay. Granted, I gave you some fundamental knowledge, right, up to this point. Uh -huh. There's only so much that we can cover in a short amount of time. But the reason why I'm really excited to have you on the phone with me is because you are coming from zero and so yeah if anyone's watching this video they can they can know oh well he's going too fast so you're gonna keep me throttled down to where i'm not like going over your head yes and if i if i can understand you like teaching me codes in english <laughs> of course anyone can do whatever you want to exactly if you can understand this both... then anyone can yes. understand this yeah we're good yeah it's both difficult Okay, so I'm just going to breeze through this. It says, welcome to Gatsby, blah, blah, blah. A full, full uh -huh. tutorial is intended to be as accessible as possible. No web development experience yet. Uh, you don't need to be an expert. Okay, let's go. So number mm -hmm. one, we need to set up our development environment. Okay, how are we going to do that? It says, okay, you need to familiarize yourself with some core web technologies. Uh, we kind of went over mm -hmm. that. We need to go familiarize ourselves with the command line. That's something that uh -huh. we have not done. But I'm going to... You use Windows, right? You have yes. a, a Windows computer, right? So if I start up my command terminal, you can do that by hitting the start button. You can just type CMD for command, and it opens up a command prompt like this. Oh, this yeah. Shell. You've probably seen people I think we've up. done that before. Okay. I've got a little shortcut here that you're going to love because it's huge. All Windows is the same, like minus 10. <laughs> what? All Windows is the same, like go to the uh, same place using the same button. Like if you go there, whatever Windows you're using, it's doing the same thing. Yeah, I mean, if you click on that button, it's always going to open up a, 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 term, yes. a, a command prompt okay. for sure. But I've, I've configured mm -hmm. mine to be like super huge, so it's great for calls, right? Like if I wanted to mm -hmm. say DIR and see a list of because all stuff. Because mine looks different. Yeah. Because of that. Right, but I blew mine up. I, I said that I want it to be bigger specifically so that on a video call you could see what I'm typing. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you'll like that, but you're, it, mm -hmm. it's going to be the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. You know? Yes. So, um... Yeah, so this is a command line, uh, a command prompt. We'll get back to that. Mm -hmm. They want to make sure that we're familiar with that, and we can we can do mm -hmm. that as it comes. And then uh, it wants us to install Node. So let me show you what that means. Now, we talked about JavaScript, right? Uh -huh. Now, let me tell you, back in 1995 when I started, and that was like Windows 95 era, JavaScript was very uh -huh. small. It did very little things because it didn't really need to do. Yeah. It didn't need to do much, honestly. Um, yeah. And so it was literally just a little tiny scripting language that did a few yeah, things. Yeah, letters were yellow. It just right? changed colors to things. It made things like flip frames. It... it it didn't do this kind of stuff that it was doing today in 2020 is okay. my point, right? So back then, mm -hmm. JavaScript was really not needed to do much else. Nowadays, um, I should tell you that JavaScript, uh, let's see, Google has their own browser called Chrome, right? Mm -hmm. Google Chrome, it's right here. I'll start it mm -hmm. up. Boom. There's Chrome. 
they have a browser and they need to understand how to process HTML. They need to understand how to interpret CSS. And they also mm-hmm. need to understand how to interpret JavaScript. So they built uh, what's called a virtual machine, like an engine that basically mm-hmm. understands and interprets JavaScript and then processes it and does whatever you ask it to do on the browser. Mm-hmm. Right? Which is Google Chrome. Yeah. Well, V8 mm-hmm. is the engine that drives JavaScript in Google Chrome. Uh-huh. So V8 is open source. And they decided to, you know, you know, make it open source and give it to everybody, give it to the whole world for free, which is amazing, right? So now everyone yes. can run JavaScript wherever they want because what happened is some other developers actually said, oh, this is interesting now that V8 is open source and now that we can use it even outside of the browser. They're like, why don't we add some abilities that JavaScript didn't normally have? So Like what? Like writing files to your computer and reading files from your computer those oh are the my most, god you couldn't do that in the web because that would be a huge security problem you wouldn't want people you yeah. wouldn't want to go to some website and then they just start writing files to your computer that'd be horrible so like remotely right you don't want that right so but with javascript running on your computer and you're writing uh-huh. javascript you're writing your own code on your computer and you want to actually open files and write files and stuff you can actually do that now because of Node. So Node is is literally, if I go to nodejs.org, this is basically that V8 engine I told you about that Chrome had, and they've added a whole bunch of libraries on top of it. If I click on API docs, you'll see they added all sorts of stuff like file system. Um, I can read write files. I can, uh, let's see, they've got whole bunch of file related operations that you can do it's huge it's another dictionary of just stuff that you can do with mm-hmm. node right yes. so um i just wanted to explain what node was so that when we install it you understand what you're doing so if you install node you basically just come to nodejs.org and you click on this lts version which means long-term support and it's going to download an installer and you'll install it i've already done that so i'm not going to do it again but essentially what that okay. allows you to do is now I'm in my shell, right? My, my command prompt. And I'm going to uh-huh. say node dash dash version. And it's going to tell me that I'm running node version 12.16.2. Oh. Okay? Yes. So I have node installed on my computer. What, what can I do with it? Well, let's play with it for a little while. And I'll show you. <clears throat> We've already talked about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We're going to focus on JavaScript a little bit for a while. Okay. So I'm going to start up uh, another program. If I go to desktop.github.com, I think it is, there's this GitHub desktop client. Um, I should explain that. You know nothing, so let me just explain everything. Yes. <laughs> GitHub is a website where a lot of people go especially if they want to work on open source projects and they just want to write code for free and they just want to put it somewhere or companies Mm -hmm. will actually go there and they'll pay to have their code hosted by GitHub. And so they know that their code is safe and they can, they can change their code every day and they always know that they can go back to an older version. It's like a host. Yeah, exactly. It hosts all those big projects and things like I've got, if you go to github.com slash Jed and you have to pay. I don't have to pay if I'm writing open source, though, because if you go to github.com slash jedmal, you'll see that I have, like, 249 repositories here. Uh-huh. And if you if you filter by sources, these are the ones that I've created. Those are 124. Uh-huh. And if you look so... at this graph here with all these green boxes, that shows you how many contributions I've made in the last year, oh, how many yeah. open source contributions. So it's a cool website that basically allows you to kind of collect all of your code. Like without... it's a free library. Yeah, and like you don't have to worry oh. about your hard drive crashing and then you lose everything, right? It's hosted, they worry about it, you just you just What's there. hard drive crashing? Yeah. So I installed this as well. I would suggest you do the same if you wanted to build something um, because you're going to want to be able to put your code somewhere. You're going to want to have different versions of it you're going to make updates to it like you said earlier 
what happens if I change my buttons and I add another one? Am I going to lose everything? No, you just put your code in the same place and you just start adding more mm -hmm. code to it over time. Okay, you saved her. So I'm going to start up my GitHub client right now. And it looks like this. Is this little program here. I'm going to minimize. Is this program here? Oh, it's a program, it's not just a website. You, right, it's a website, but it has this program that allows you to interface with their website. It's a client for their oh. website. Oh. Yeah. So I'm going to just illustrate real quick. Like if I wanted to create a new project, right? Mm -hmm. Like let's yes. say, let's say, let's just call it Gatsby because we're trying Gatsby, right? Yeah. So I would go to github.com slash jedmau because that's the, you'd have to mm -hmm. create an account and like make your own name here like I did. And you look for a, a file that it's what you want to do and it's already made. Well, you click this little plus button at the top right, right? Uh -huh. And you say new repository. Yeah. And I'm going to say, oh, I can create a template. No, I don't want to do a template. I just want to do a new repository and I'm going to call it Gatsby. Gatsby. It's unavailable. Uh, right, because this is our. It's available. Because this is not. It just... is available. I must have already created that. I don't know. Let's call this um, um, recipes or something. I think they said. Okay, fine. We're gonna call it recipes. Okay. Uh, and then for the description, I'm just gonna say a collection of my favorite of the recipes. The best. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm going to make it public or private. I'm going to make it private because technically a... I work at Apple. I'm not actually allowed to write any public yes. code. So, <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to do that. And then for I want to initialize it with a readme file so that people know why, why I created the project. And for git ignore file, um, we're going to type node because it's a node project we're going to say. And then I'm going to add a MIT license, which says anybody can use it. Whatever it's open source. But if, what if you don't have one? You can you can look at this. It'll tell you all sorts no. of. I can say no. Okay. It can tell you all sorts of different licenses you can give to your code. You can make it um, not open source if you want. You can say whatever you want. But MIT is a very common like open source license that people put. If you do no license, that means technically uh -huh. nobody's allowed to use your code unless you tell them that they can. Oh. So. That's bad. The unlicense is interesting because it's like, uh, what happens if I don't do a license? It's like, well, this is what happens. Um, you're not allowing people to use the software. Yeah, stuff like that. So whatever. I'm going to create a new repository with the MIT license because that's what I like to use. And then I'm just going to create it. It's called Recipes. And so now I have okay. this, new, this new repo called Recipes. Repo is short for repository. It's called recipes. So what do I do with it? Okay, well, I want to start working on this on my own computer, right? I'm not just going to sit here on this website. So I hit this green clone or download button, and I'm going to say open in desktop, which is my GitHub desktop application that I showed you earlier. Uh huh. And it's going to say, oh, okay, do you want to go ahead and do that? I'm like, yeah, of course I do. I just clicked it. And then... It says, okay, where do you want to put it on your hard drive? And I say, well, I've already got a good place for that, so I'm going to clone it right there. And here we go. We've got my my recipes project, and it's on my local computer right now. Yes. Yep. So um, I want to start writing files, right? And like writing code, maybe connect some things together. So how do I do that? Well... I would strongly suggest that we go to a different website called code.visualstudio.com and this is going to be another program that will allow you to write code and open projects and stuff like that. So you download... Oh, there's a lot of source. So... Well, yeah, they don't... You have there's... like zillion pages you can use and can help you. You just need to understand what all the tools do so that when you're using them, you understand why you're using them. So um, I'm, ex okay. I'm explaining that if you want to write code, you could just, you could run Windows Notepad all day long and you could write code like that function we wrote earlier, like add to cart. You could, mm -hmm. you could do that right here in this notepad if you wanted to. 
but it's going to be very painful experience because it's not going to help you at all. The code coloring won't be there. It'll be very hard for a human to read. So just okay. download uh, Visual Studio Code, and I've already installed it locally on my machine. And so GitHub, this GitHub uh, client that I showed you earlier, it already knows that I have that installed. So I'm going to say repository up at the top here, and I'm going to say open in Visual Studio Code. So it does that. And now here I am. Uh, I need to close this. Uh, there we go. Here I am in my new project. It has its own README that says a collection of favorite recipes. I've got my own MIT license. I've got my own mm -hmm. ignore file that's, that you don't need to pay too much attention to, right? So I've, I've got a project. Mm -hmm. Now I can start putting stuff in here and start building a website, right? That's what we want to do. So you're using JavaScript because you're going to use like functions. Well, yeah, I didn't use JavaScript yet. Right now, all we have is this markdown file, which is really just like Okay, a... you still on AJTM. I'm still what? And the first. I mean, this is just, at this point, this is a, a very naked project. It doesn't have anything in it. There's no JavaScript. There's no HTML. There's no CSS. It's just a folder where you can put things. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. So Gatsby... It's a little tutorial is probably going to tell you a lot of these same things of like how to start writing code, right? And this is basically how you start. So let's see. It wants us to install Node. I already covered that. It wants us to install on a Mac some sort of command line tools. Um, we're not on a Mac on, for the purposes of this demo. Um, we've already installed Node. Okay, what's next? It says, mm -hmm. let's keep going. We don't need to install Node. Okay, we installed GitHub for Windows, right? So we've already got Git. Now it wants mm -hmm. us to use the Gatsby CLI. So before I get into that, I'm just going to show you a little bit more about how Node works. So, but that's what they're asking? That's what they want us to do next, but I don't want to give you too much information all at once. So I want to take uh -huh. a step back and just show you how to uh, uh -huh. file preferences. I want to blow this font up really big so that you can see it. So um, let's see here. Preferences. Open user settings. No, 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 I want the, I want the text editor. Here we go. Let's see. Terminal. There we go. So, say, I, I'm just editing my settings in VS Code to make it really big for you so that you can read it. Uh, font size, mm -hmm. maybe. Font family. Font size in pixels. Let's make it like 24. Really big. There we go. Is that easier for you to read at the bottom there? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. So I actually changed my, you know, we showed you this earlier for Windows. It's the command prompt. You can actually select what you want your default shell to be in VS Code. And I switched it from command prompt to git bash because git bash is exactly what I want because it's more friendly with git github and all that mm -hmm. so um, I can run a bunch of commands in here and you should be able to see it okay so anyway here we are we have a project and we have node installed on our computer because we say node dash dash version and it tells us that we have node but what can we do with it well we can write JavaScript files so I'm gonna write a file Right here, I'm gonna say, right click, new file, and we're gonna call this just hello.js. So now we're in JavaScript. And you remember we wrote a function before, right? So I'm gonna write a function. Actually, I'm not even gonna do that. I'm just gonna say console.log, hello. Save it. And now if I mm -hmm. run node and I say 
node hello.js, it's going to respond hello. And that's what node is. It just allowed us to write JavaScript and to run that JavaScript on our computer without a browser. Traditionally, JavaScript would only run inside of a browser, but now I've shown you you can run it on your computer without a browser. Oh, Does that make just sense? that. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, literally all the... Yeah, because faster. Oh. Yeah. But like I told you earlier, there are things that you can do in Node that you absolutely cannot do in your browser, like read and write files. So do you want to see, do you want to see how to do that? Yes. Okay, let's do that. So I'm going to say import. I need a library to write a file. Okay, so I'm going to say mm -hmm. import um, all as fs from fs. And fs stands for file system. So I've said, I want to import everything, which is what the asterisk is. And I'm going to name it fs from this library called fs. Okay. So now if mm -hmm. you say fs dot, it's going to show you all these different things that you can do, which are exactly what I showed you earlier on nodejs.org. When you go to API docs and you go down to file system, these these things that you see here, like FS sync and let's see, let's do write file. Where's write file? Here we go. Here's write, fs.write. If I go here, it's going to tell you how to use this write function to write files to your computer. And I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but this mm -hmm. is exactly the same thing that you're seeing here is I'm say fs.write. And it's helping me VS code because I'm not using notepad VS code is actually telling me, yeah, that function exists. And if you use it, it's going to tell you how, how many different ways that that function can be called. So I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, I can just say, write, um, let's say names dot txt and I'm going to give it um, some sort of value and it's going to say uh, Louisa and then I'm going to do a new mm. line and then I'm going to put Jed and I'm going to put our both of our names in this file and literally that's all that I'm going to do mm -hmm. so theoretically if I run node hello.js uh, right it doesn't like this Okay, I need to use some older syntax, sorry. So I'm gonna do const fs equals require fs. And that's how you would actually import a library in Node. With no other tools available, that's how you would do it. So let me, let me try this again. Node hello.js still doesn't like it. It says FD argument must be of type. Oh my. Number. <laughs> We're so bad with me. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on. It's write file. I forgot. Write file. Let's try this one more time. Still doesn't like it. It says callback must be a function. Okay, that's fine. It wants me to put this callback function here. So I'm going to do it. Whatever. I don't want to get too much into that yet but there uh, it says null right so I I didn't have any errors but it did write this new file called names and there's our names right there oh isn't that cool you just wrote a file write a yeah little, just write a tiny bit of code say where you want to write the file say what you want to put in the file and then it has this callback function which says okay well if there's some sort of an error and I can't write uh -huh. that file for some reason then I'm going to just display that error. So if I run it again, it's going to just keep doing it over and over and over. But now what, what if I want to actually read the file, right? Yeah. And then instead of, right, so I've read the file and if there's some sort of an error, I'm just going to log it and then get out of here. But if there's no error and I actually have something to show you, I'm going to say console.log 
contents, and then I'm going to say contents dot to string. I know I'm going pretty fast here, but I just wanted to show you that I could read that same file and see it's going to actually show you in my console here that I ran the file, it read the file, mm -hmm. and it extracted our names out of the file and just printed them down here in our console. So we've read, we've we wrote a file, and then we also read the file and displayed its contents with Node. Nothing, nothing that you could have done in the browser. Yes, that's what's Node for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, <clears throat> you don't have to read and write files with Node, but you can. Mm -hmm. You can just do other things that are not file related, but the point is you can run JavaScript without a browser and you have access to the file system should you need it. Yeah. So I'm not going to get too much into the syntax of JavaScript right now, but you can see that that's what it's for. We can get into no, that. I see. We can get into that later if you want. But yeah. So I'm going to delete the file and delete that file, and we're going to go back to that Gatsby thing and say, "What do you guys want us to do with with Node?" It's like, well, he wants us to run this command: npm install dash g Gatsby CLI. Okay, so I guess let's do that. npm, if I do dash v, it's going to show me that my npm version is 6.14.4. Because when you install Node, it comes not just mm. with Node, it also comes with npm, which is like, technically, npm doesn't actually stand for anything. But really, it is kind of like a Node package manager. So if you have mm -hmm. some sort of library, some sort of free code that somebody wrote out there in the wild and you want to install it, you need npm to do that. So mm -hmm. if I go to npm js.com, this is npm and if I search for Gatsby CLI, you'll see that it's here and it's got 409,000 downloads just this week. Oh. So it's very popular. You can see it's on an upward trend. People are downloading it more and more and more. It's a, got a readme file here that explains what it is. So yeah, Gatsby is telling us in its tutorial here that it wants us to install that program, that library. So we're going to go back to VS Code and we're going to do exactly what they said. We're going to say npm install dash g which means I want to install this globally not just here in this project but like everywhere so I can run this anywhere I want Gatsby CLI let's see what happens so this is going to npm js.com it's pulling down all sorts of free code a whole ton of it by the way Gatsby is built of a whole bunch of other tooling and stuff that other people have created. So there's just, imagine just thousands and thousands of developers yeah, writing all this yes. code and it's downloading it all right now in one big package. But even like too heavy to have on your computer, like it's for no reason. No, it's not that heavy actually. It's, um, I don't know how much, how much. Because it's all writing things, right? Oops, NPM OS gets B C L I. Ah, that's not a good example. But yeah, it installed everything. Gatsby C L I is installed, so theoretically I should probably be able to run Gatsby help. And sure enough, mm -hmm. now I can run Gatsby commands because I installed their CLI. Which CLI okay. CLI stands for command line interface. So basically that just means like Right now we're in this shell, right? This command prompt, this bash, git bash shell. And this, this shell that we're typing commands into is called a CLI. So when we install the Gatsby CLI, it allows us to run this Gatsby command. 
We've got a help command. It says, look, you can run all these sub commands like develop, build, serve, info, clean, mm -hmm. whatever. I can do Gatsby dash V if I want to know the version of it. It's version 2.11.11. So we're good. We're ready to go. We're, we're ready to start running Gatsby commands. Yeah. What's next? What is next? <laughs> yeah. So now it says Gatsby help, which we just did. Ba 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 ba. We're good to go so far. And now it says it wants to create a new hello world. Um, let's see. Open up your terminal. Create a new site from mm -hmm. a starter. Hello Just world. Just using this code. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do that. Okay. Let's try. <laughs> Sounds too easy. I'm going to copy the whole thing. Go right back uh -huh. into our project here. Paste it. It says Gatsby new hello world. So the name of the project is going to be hello world. And then they're going to pull, they're going to use this URL, which is going to tell mm -hmm. Gatsby what code to use to actually build that hello world project. Mm -hmm. So let's do it. Let's see what happens. Okay. It wants to know which package manager I'm going to use. I already said we have NPM. So we're just going to use that. Yes. He said, okay, that's your preferred package manager. We're downloading a whole bunch of stuff. That's why they ask us to have NPM. <laughs> yeah. Yarn is another one. It's, it's actually arguably better on, on Mac. It's faster in a lot of ways. It's got some stuff, but you know, Usually when you're going to demonstrate something, you're, you're going to use the tools that it comes with and not confuse people with too mm -hmm. much extra information. <laughs> mm -hmm. So here it is. It says your new Gatsby site has been successfully bootstrapped. Start developing it by running CD Hello World. And then here's this folder of, uh, you know, you can look here too. This folder that's been created. All these files are in there already. Mm -hmm. And it says if we just type Gatsby develop, it'll run this site. It's building, building, success. It says here's where the site is. So if I control click this link, HTTP localhost 8000. It's our website. It's going to start a website right here, which says hello world. I can refresh mm. the website. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So granted, now this is a very naked page, just like back here before we've created mm -hmm. any buttons or, or oh, content. All it is is text, right? But the interesting thing here is that this is all running on my own computer. I'm not going to some website, whatever.com. I'm going to localhost, which is my computer, on port 8000, mm -hmm. and it knows that to serve this page. And you don't need internet, right? Because no internet. It's all on your computer. At this, at this yes. point, at this point, because it's already downloaded all these packages and stuff, I could uh -huh. disconnect my internet and run this build command, and it should work. Yeah. And yeah, you, you'll be able to run this. Ooh. You could be on an airplane with no Wi-Fi and you could just start working mm -hmm. on your own website locally on your own computer and you can refresh the page and see what changed. And when you land, you could upload it if you wanted to. Okay. So I'm going to click on this GraphQL link as well. And what this is, is this is basically... Even though it just says, hello world... There's a back end that's driving this, which is basically just a way of storing data and accessing that data. But mm -hmm. we're not going to get into that quite yet. So let's go back to VS Code. Mm -hmm. And let's just, before we read the next steps of Gatsby, I'm just going to poke, I'm going to peek in this source folder here. There's an index.js file here. And sure enough, it says hello world right there. So I'm going to snap this to the left side of my screen and snap this one to the right. And so now we have a side-by-side -side view. And oh, I'm, I'm so much curious. better. This is running and I'm very curious what happens if I change this to 
Hello, Louisa, and save it. Yeah, I was How long does it take? Thing. Do I have to do anything else? I'm hitting save. One, two, three, save. Boom. Your name is on the right. I didn't even have to refresh the page. Mm -hmm. This is called Hot Reloading, and it's a really useful mm -hmm. developer experience tool that allows you as a developer to make changes to your web page and to see those changes immediately reflected in the browser without doing anything else. Oh, that's good. Super good, because if you want to make changes, you don't want to sit there dicking around with things all day long. Yeah, and of our refreshing, it's very fast. It's not that good because we need to do that all the time. Sometimes you just forget about it and you writing things and you don't even know what's looking, how it's looking. Yep. So, why are you doing it? So, so you gonna, can you can see you whatever can see, yep, whatever exactly. is happening exactly at the same time. In real you're time. Writing the code, yeah, in real time. Yep. And that's very and valuable because you don't have to wonder what it's gonna look like, you know, you don't have to wait. You see it immediately. Yep. So, um, right. that's cool. We just created a new project. Um, yeah, more or less. Yeah, it's a project. Yep, yeah, it's a project. It's very <laughs> it's naked. It's a project. Yeah. It's very naked, but that's a really good start because you could already publish this this website because it's a static website. It's not. Yeah. It doesn't require any back end, like. I and know. if someone asks, do you have a website? You say, yes, it's in progress, but I do have one. Yeah, it says hello world. <laughs> it's building, <laughs> yes. Yeah, like you can write it building still. Yeah, it's good. It's fast. Sounds like useful tools, useful websites, stuff like that. It's telling us to download VS Code, which is, we've already done. It's telling mm -hmm. us to install the prettier plugin, which by the way, I've already done. But if you, if you go to VS Code here on the left and you look for extensions, you can search for prettier. Mm -hmm. And it says it's a prettier code formatter, right? So mm -hmm. I've already installed it. You'll definitely want to as well because what happens is, like we talked about earlier, if, if some developer, let's say you have a team of five people and yeah. you hired them and you write your code and then somebody goes in there and they just like move things around and it's like super ugly. Well, they hit the yeah. save button, watch what happens. Nothing, nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? Uh, because it's saved on their own computer. Hmm, hold on. Open the extension view. Yeah, search for prettier, click install, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to figure out why that didn't work real quick, prettier. It should have automatically reformatted the the file for me, but for, for whatever reason it didn't. Let me see if I can make it do it. Format document with prettier. Right, so that works anyway. The point is prettier defines what a document should look like. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to worry about like arguing about, well, I think that a space should be here or a space should be there. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about any of that. Prettier does it all for you and then you call it a day. So the whole team is writing code and all the code looks exactly the same because nobody's putting their own personal opinions into it about how it should look. Yeah, that's good. It's good. So I'm going to close that down and... Let's keep reading. So it's like, okay, we did all this stuff. Let's go on to getting to know Gatsby building blocks. We've already talked about HTML, CSS, JavaScript. JavaScript. We, we didn't talk about React yeah. yet or GraphQL, but so this is a JavaScript file, right? But it's actually mm -hmm. also a React file because you're importing this React library. And then okay. you are exporting this function with a div tag in it. Notice, this is a JavaScript file, but you're looking at an HTML tag inside of a JavaScript file. Mm -hmm. What is going on, right? Well, mm -hmm. it's all the same, it's this all is, together. This, exactly, this is what React allows you to do as a developer. It allows you to write JavaScript, mm -hmm. 
but it also allows you to basically put HTML directly into your JavaScript file so that you don't have to mm. constantly switch between HTML and JavaScript to do this kind of oh. stuff. Yeah. You can think of it that way, but yeah, I don't want to confuse you too much, so I'm not going to tell you much more than that, but essentially that's what it's allowing you to do. This is an HTML tag inside mm -hmm. of a JavaScript file. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's kind of easier because imagine having to switch all the time and it's like 10 times more um, way for you to do something wrong. You know, like there's more chances for you to get something wrong, at least for me. Because you have to switch all the time. What's funny is back in the day, again, let's go back to 1995. Everybody just wrote everything in just like one file. You had HTML, CSS, JavaScript all in one file. And it was kind of a mess. And so there was a movement where for a number of many years, uh, people would separate these things into separate files. So you had a separate JavaScript file, separate CSS file, mm -hmm. and separate HTML file. And that made things so much cleaner because you didn't have this mess all jumbled together in one page. Mm -hmm. However, ever since React came out, we've been kind of going back to having HTML and JavaScript into a single file. And a lot of people didn't like that at first. Because it's like, well, what are we doing? We've just spent so many years getting away from that idea. But what React realized is that once you once you combine those things back together, you start to be able to make some pretty interesting decisions about how your content is displayed. And it makes things a little bit more readable. The way that they did it, it makes it readable anyway. Yeah, and, I, I think that's because everybody's going back. Because now it's readable. Like, back there was not. So it was like more confusing to look at. At least, at least for me, I don't know. It was like too much stuff, right? Now it seems more organized to the eyes. It's definitely more organized than what we used to do, that's for sure. So let's see, Gatsby's saying, all right, what are we doing here? Tutorial part zero, we created a new site. Mm -hmm. Opening up the code, okay, we did that. Right, it's just telling us, look, if we, if we come back to this tomorrow like let's say you shut down your computer and you come back tomorrow and you want to work on your website again all you have mm -hmm. to do is start up visual studio code again you go back into your project again and then you run the same command gatsby develop and then it starts up your server again so every time you want to start working on your your site you have to say gatsby develop mm -hmm. yeah that sounds good Okay, so we've already gone over how to create changes. We've already talked about hot reloading. There's a lot of stuff to read here that I've just breezed through with you already. So hopefully that's valuable for you. Oh, it's okay. You can also put um, CSS in here like it's telling us. So you can say style equals color purple. Font size, oops. Font size, 72px. And then, here we have it. Hello, Louisa, mm -hmm. in big purple letters. Yes. Yep. So... There we go, that looks better. See how pretty your formats it for you? It looks a lot easier on the eyes there. So now we have CSS, HTML, and JavaScript all in the same file, but it actually looks pretty clean. Yeah, cleaner than the Than first. three separate files, right? Well, yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's how you do that. Now, let's see what they're gonna talk about next.
Yeah, there's just changing content, nothing crazy. We already showed how to do that. It's talking about how to add an image to the page. If you wanted to reference this again, well, we could do that real quick. Actually, there's nothing hard about that. I'll add this image. We talked about H1 tags before. We're going to do a P tag. What a world. And then it wants us to put an image in here too. And I'm going to give it an alt of scenery, whatever. So going back here, oh, we, we don't want it to be so big anymore. So let's get rid of that. Whoa, I did the wrong thing. There we go. So hello, Louisa, what a world. This is actually starting to look like a website, website. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You got a yeah. picture, you got some text. It's starting to have some life. So they're just telling you some basics of HTML here. Wait, HTML in our JavaScript? They're explaining why that's happening like I just did. Um, What's components? So yeah, this thing right here where it says this, these two parentheses followed by a lambda like fat arrow symbol. This whole mm -hmm. thing is, is technically, it's called a component. You can have any number of components, like you might have a special component just for your add to cart button. And that's all oh. it does is it renders an add to cart button and allows you to add to your cart, you know? Mm -hmm. So you can break up your page into different components. Um, uh -huh. as you see fit, you can kind of say, oh, well, it makes sense for me to break this out into its own component because I want to use this on this other page as well. You know, something like that. Oh, okay. Yep. Let's see what this HTML looks like. Let's add a button to our page. Click me button right there. Okay. Right, so this is explaining. Like we showed earlier, if you create a button with a class that says click me, you can actually mm -hmm. take that into its own component. And then in JSX, which is what we do with React, you can just say primary button, click me. You don't have to add the class. You don't have to add like the on click events or anything like that. All you have to do is say primary button, click me. And it knows the behavior of that button. And you've, you've abstracted that behavior away into a component. So your code is even more mm -hmm. readable, right? Yes. I could show you right now, if I create a new folder called components and just like they're demonstrating here, primary button, I say new file, primary button dot JS. And I say import react from react. And then I say uh, export default and what is it button class primary button and instead of click me the way that a component works in this case is you want you would want to actually say um, props.children here and that says hey i've got a component i'm gonna mm -hmm. handle all this complexity but right here is where i want to put the children so I can go back into my index.js file and I can say, okay, well, I've imported React. Let me also import uh, primary button from components. And then instead of doing this purple stuff here, I'm just gonna say, uh, actually purple stuff is okay. Instead of doing this, I'm gonna say primary button, click me, save that. And it has a problem. Why? It says it can't resolve components. 
Oh, components slash primary button. Success. I go back over here. It says click me. If I go to my component file and I say, hey, you know what? I actually want uh, color red. That component will always color their buttons with red text. Mm. And you can have. And these. as you're writing, it's already been saved. Yeah. So we well, can I, use I hit save. Okay. I hit the save button, but I could add another button here that says another button. Save that, mm -hmm. and it also has red text because it's a primary button, just like the other one. It has mm -hmm. the same behavior, but here's the component because it abstracted away the color, the class of the button, all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff, and it just dumps the children into the middle of it. Simple. Oh. Yes, and can create like zillions of files. Yeah, and now look how oh. readable this is because now I have two buttons mm -hmm. and it's super readable. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's cool. What's next? Using page components. What Do you have any questions? Mm, no, just about the save pump. If they're saving, why we are doing this? Oh, you mean if I'm hitting save? I'm hitting control S to save the file all the time. Yeah, I mean, my concern is always like, whatever, if I shut down, it's gonna be still there if mm, I open up. Right, right, again. right. So let's go ahead and create a new, I'm gonna click this plus symbol here. I have mm -hmm. a new terminal command right here, right? I can say mm -hmm. git version. And it's going to tell me I'm running Git version 221 on Windows. Fine. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to say Git remote ah, remote dash V. And it tells me uh, that my website is actually, uh, rather my project, my repository, is at https mm -hmm. github.com jedmal recipes. Right? Recipes. Uh -huh. So I can just say Git push. And since this says origin, I'm going to say, I want to push this website to my origin. Uh, actually, my bad. I have to do one thing first. Git status. Hello world. So I say git add dot. And it's going to add all these files to what's called mm -hmm. staging. Because uh, I want to actually wrap this up into a commit and say something. So I'm going to say, okay. Um, I've, I've added these files to my staging, but basically you would wrap this up into one commit and then you would git push origin or just git push if you have it set up right, but git push origin uh, master colon master. And that's saying, I wanna push my master branch up to my master branch, mm -hmm. same name. You can have any number of branches that you want. So you can have like, for example, if you're working on your website, and you want master to be the version that is live, right? But then you wanna you wanna branch off and you wanna start creating this new page, but you don't wanna really publish that page until next month. And so you create a new branch called new page. And then you work on that for a while, you push code up onto that branch for a while, and then eventually you're mm -hmm. gonna merge that new page into master, which when you do, it becomes live. So you can do oh, stuff like okay. that. But yeah, that that I can get into that more a little bit later. Right now, my environment is not set up for it, but um, I I did some stuff with my GitHub that that's going to make that more difficult. No, oh, yeah, I got it. But yeah, it's saying okay, you can create it. as many pages as you want. So let's try that. Let's create a new page, new file, about.js. We're going to say import React from React. Export defaults. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to create a new div with a style of color teal. We're going to put an H1 in there that says about Louisa and P such wow, very react. Save it. And then if you go to localhost slash about, you have a new page. Now you've got two pages. You have a website now because you have more than one page. It's not a web page anymore, it's a website. 
No, oh, yeah. But like we talked about before, you want like a link to go there, right? So on your index yeah, I page. Yeah, need a link. Right, so let's change this primary button. I'm going to change it to an anchor tag. It's going to say ahref equals slash about. And I'm going to just type the word about. Save that. Go back to our local host. And as you can see, there's this about link at the bottom. Oh, I'm going to yeah. click it, and it takes me directly to this new about page. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, this is basically teaching React at this point about how you create components and break them up into smaller pieces. But I think I already showed that to you, so. Yeah, and what's, what's next? After this, let's see, what are props? We already talked about let's that props. a little bit. Oh, I'm not gonna get into that yet. You don't need to know that yet. Uh, let's see. Using the link component. Hmm, okay, well that's interesting. That is something that I don't know about yet, so. Import link from Gatsby. Let's try that. Import from Gatsby. Import link from Gatsby. So they have their own special link that allows you to navigate between routes. Not So we're not going to use the anchor tag. We're going to use their thing. And I'm going to put it at the top, actually. So we're going to do link. How do you use their link? It says to contact. So we're going to do link to about, about. Save that. Go back. So there's the about link using that new link that, that Gatsby has provided for us. Click about, boom, it goes there immediately. The reason why it's important to use their link instead of using an anchor tag is because of those performance things we talked about earlier. So Gatsby's very, very smart about how it builds your web page, your website, and mm -hmm. it knows how to make it faster. And so if you say link, what it's going to do is it's going to kind of download stuff ahead of time so that when you, when you eventually click on that link, it's going to load instantly. Yeah. But you don't need to worry about that because Gatsby worries about all that for you. Sounds pretty good, this program, isn't it? Even yes. for me, that it's a company dummy. I mean, yeah, it's so cool that it just starts right up and then you're, you're ready to go. Yeah, sort of. You need to download a lot of stuff. Hmm. This is trying to yeah, show us... Yeah, at least for me, because it, you already had it because you're used to it. But if it was just me doing it, I would must do it from zero you know yeah so it's not like that easy as they say on the message and website at least not for someone who's not used to do that so I've got two links now I'm going to use uh, an ordered list This is those like bulleted lists you see on websites all the time. So I'm gonna just name this contact. My brain is not working. <laughs> right, so now you've got an unordered list, like a bulleted list. It says about contact. I click on contact, but it doesn't exist. So it says, oh, 404, this page doesn't exist. Yeah, that's true. So <laughs> it shows you what does exist is about and slash. So you have to create that page if you wanted it to work. Ooh, now it's gonna talk about how to publish your site. 
Yeah, we could do that. Um, I kind of want to take a break, though. I'm getting kind of hungry. Mm-hmm. I didn't eat lunch yet, so maybe we can start this up again a little bit later. Yeah. Okay. I'm literally doing nothing. Awesome. Quits for now. Awesome. Let's, <laughs> let's call it quits for now, and then we'll talk about how to publish the website when we get back. Yeah, how to publish on online. Yeah, like, it's actually really easy. Like, because we are pretending we are at home with no internet, just coding. Yeah. And now you're going to launch it. Okay. That's it. Well, I'm going to call it stops right there, and uh, we'll I'll call you back um, maybe in an hour or two. In an hour. Okay. Okay. Bye. I'm going to do the drugstore while you're doing that. All right. Bye. Okay, bye.